Alright everyone, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you my review slash recap of Chelsea's 2-0 loss to Leicester. Um, a pretty miserable defeat to be honest, and one where a lot of the players really weren't up for it. Is it going to spell the end of Frank Lampard's tenure as Chelsea manager? I will be getting into that a bit later, but as always I'll be giving you uh, my recap of the game. Um, I won't be giving any player ratings, just a uh, heads up, because what's the point? I mean, no one particularly played that well. I will, however, be giving a player um, a point or two or three for the player of the points uh, season point scoring system, though. As you know, there was maybe one or two guys that at least um, did the badge proud in this game, but that isn't really saying much. But um, I guess without further ado, before if you guys do enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe for more Chelsea FC content. My preview for our game against Lincoln will be up before the game does start. Hopefully better signs from that game. I feel like we've been saying this for a while. It's been a really down patch, but um, with the starting eleven, um, it was a little bit confusing, as you guys can see on the screen. Now, I thought some things were good. I thought Abraham starting was the right choice. I thought the hudson Adoy starting was the right choice. This is all, like, not in hindsight, by the way. This is all as the lineup was announced. Um, obviously, Mount started. We saw Rhys James back, which I thought was good. Um, but then there was a few dodgy ones. I don't really know why Rudiger has all of a sudden jumped Kurt Zuma's place in the pecking order. I don't know why Kovacic was in that deep line role in the midfield three. I know some people have spoke about him playing there before, um, like under Sarri, stuff like that. But he just hasn't played there enough to be especially played there against Leicester. Um, I also don't see why Pulisic was starting. Now, obviously, I think Pulisic is great. But on current form, I think Ziek has looked better, um, especially against Morecambe. And I think hudson Doyle obviously had to start. So I don't see why Pulisic start. And whilst towards the end he did some very good runs and dribbles, won a few fouls, his end product still wasn't there for me. And I was surprised because he actually did um, not come off later in the match. He actually like, brought off Havertz, who I thought was actually okay. It was one of Havertz's better performances for us since he had that slump. Um, and hudson Lloyd came off as well for Werner, who... Werner actually had the ball in the back of the net at one point, which is just typical, isn't it? It was offside, though, so that guy can really not catch a break. Starting to feel a little bit sorry for him, but it wasn't that um, quick onto the match, guys, that we did concede. Um, a set piece that wasn't defended as well. Um, the ball goes out wide. They don't control it well. It looks like it's OK, but indeed he hits it with the outside of his foot, and it's a really nice goal onto the left-hand side. Mendy couldn't do anything about it. The defence couldn't really do anything about it when the ball was hit, but maybe a bit more pressure was needed. Um, indeed he's scoring the goal, and um, yeah, just a really good goal. Couldn't do much about it, really, but... Five minutes in, that just sort of set the tempo for the whole game. And, um, yeah, it just um, didn't look like it was going to be good from then on. To be honest, guys, I sort of... I did watch the game, but I sort of half-watched it because the feeling for me just wasn't there. Um, things that I did notice um, was that we did have a couple of opportunities from set pieces. Um, hudson and um sort of fluffed a bit of a chance where he didn't really make the right decision. It is typical that the game where hudson Doy actually gets a start, he doesn't actually have... The best performance, although like I said, I would have played him on the left and Ziek on the right, to be honest. Um, but that obviously didn't happen. Um, Ziek did come on a bit later, but the game was basically done by then. Leicester did score just before half-time. Um, when the ball went through, it was chipped over the top. The two centre-backs couldn't deal with it. I believe it was Harvey Barnes um, who the ball hit off. It fell to Madison, and um, that was 2-0. Now, I've heard some people blaming certain people. To be honest, if I had to put blame on someone, I think it was Reese James not really catching his man. I don't think it was Rudiger's man, really, although you can still blame Rudiger for not winning the initial ball. I think it was just a bit of a defensive um, frailty um, from the team, and um, I think that the confidence of the team is just poor, and that's why we're seeing the defence um, definitely struggling at the moment. And, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if that can improve. I mean, we kept a clean sheet against Fulham, to be fair, but they were down to 10 men for the whole of the second half. Um, but yeah, besides that, like I said, Werner had the ball in the back of the net at one point. There was maybe a few other times where Leicester could have even multiplied their leads. Vardy getting a good chance, but um, the chip didn't quite work out for him. And um, a few things that I just sort of noticed while watching the game. I didn't think the pressure was there enough. I don't know if team, the players were tired, or it was just one of those things if they weren't playing for the manager. I hope that's not the case. Obviously, some of the players were playing for the manager, like Mount, who... Um, you know, had loads of tackles, made loads of chances, 
Um, but he was sort of the only player who was in it. I noticed, you know, players like Abraham, and I love Tammy, and I sort of love it when he does this, you know, when you see him sort of giving out, you know, complaining, shouting when he doesn't get the ball or win the ball. It's good in one aspect, but also kind of bad where he sort of does it in a bit more of a defeatist sort of manner. I think there's two different ways you sort of see him do it. And um, I think they definitely um, sort of contrast each other in um, how you sort of um, portray how he um, played during the game. Um, yeah, I I'm not too sure if Rhys James was lacking sharpness or if he just wasn't match fit. We did see him obviously get forced into the Arsenal game. So who knows if he was fit or not enough for this game. Um yeah, but I don't know, guys. To be honest, it was just a pretty dull performance. Um, maybe if some chances had gone, like, the other way, maybe we would have actually seen the result, to be fair. But, I mean, our performance didn't really cater any sort of result, to be honest. And I am a bit worried for Frank Lampard. But if I do quickly get into my player of the season point scoring system, like I said, no player ratings, because um, I just don't see what the point is, everyone was pretty terrible, to be honest, some players that I thought played okay, I thought, I don't know, I thought like Thiago Silva was okay, I thought that Havertz was alright, I thought Pulisic was okay in like the last 10 minutes, and then I thought Mount was our best player, and that's just going to be getting a point guys, I'm going to give one point to Mason Mount, I'm not going to give him any more just because it was a pretty terrible loss, um, where no one played amazing, but I think Mount deserves one point, because he was pretty much the only player there who was fighting for the team, and maybe he's going to show why he should maybe be a future Chelsea captain, because these are the sort of situations where these sorts of leaders do like show themselves, or at least try to, and um, yeah, maybe Mason Mount could be a future Chelsea captain on that one. But um, yeah, some things I thought were positive on the lineup. some things that I didn't. Maybe Frank's panicking, as we know he is an inexperienced coach, so maybe he's panicking a bit with the situation, sort of trying different things and it's just not working out. I don't really know, I don't really know what the issue is guys, to be honest, you can let me know in the comments below what you think. But with Mount getting that one bonus point, um, I am going to just get into what I think about Lampard. Now I did get into this I believe after the Man City game maybe or something like that it might have been um, before or after then I'm not quite sure do correct me but um, personally I would still keep Lampard which I know seems maybe weird to some we are on a pretty big downward spiral there's obviously the joke of Arsenal only being two points behind us now and they were going to be relegated which I mean you know fair enough football banter I suppose but I just don't really see what taking Frank out now would really do. I think we've seen that in this pretty crazy mad season, not only can anything happen where you get a few wins and you've propelled up the table, but also that, you know, some managers have had slumps. You know, um, Ole had his slump, Arteta had his slump, um, Klopp is having a bit of a slump. Now, obviously, his slump isn't like losing loads of games, but he's still having a bit of a slump. And... Um, you know, we, we don't know what this, like, COVID sort of error and how it's affecting people and what's really going on. Now, obviously, things need to change. Obviously, we need some sort of plan. The players need to show a bit more fight. I don't know if the fitness regime needs to be changed. I don't know if they're tired. Um, it's a very hard thing to say, and especially with our next game being at home to Wolves. That's a scary prospect. You know they're going to sit back and try and counter us, and that has really been what a lot of the teams we've faced have been doing, and doing it quite successfully, to be honest. So I don't know how we're going to try and combat that. I do think some of the lineups need to change. Hopefully Kante's back soon. To be honest, as I'm making this video, Lampard could be sacked as I speak. I hope that's not the case. I'd still keep him. Yes, he's a Chelsea legend. Yes, I'm being biased. I don't really care. I, you know, want to see a manager stay the long term here and succeed, even if we don't get the instant success like we do um, with, you know, the classic sort of um, conveyor belt of managers we usually go with. Um, so, yeah, I hope he stays, but I think it's unlikely. He could very well be gone before our next game. Um, but, yeah, I, I hope that is not the case. But do let me know down below, guys, what you do think of that. Um, I think... If we lose and like some, if we, what we've lost, I think if some other teams win their games, we might um, go down to ninth or something, which obviously isn't um, a great situation. But um, yeah, I mean, always back the club, in my opinion. Always back the manager until he's not in charge anymore. Um, same with the players, always back them until they're, they're not there. You know, when they're playing, at least I mean. And um, yeah, hopefully 
we can turn it around and see some wins, but um, I'm not too sure, guys. Anyway, though, I do hope you enjoyed this pretty different review, maybe a bit more on the negative ends, but I think a lot of them, the Chelsea fan base, are probably feeling quite the same. I'm not going to get into the whole negativity, though, of, like, slander and, like, the toxicity of something like Twitter. I do think that's very over the top, but obviously I can see why some fans are a bit disappointed with what's going on at the moment. But um, yeah, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, leave a like and subscribe for more Chelsea FC content. I'll be hitting you guys with my preview of the game against Luton. Is it Luton or Lincoln? I can't even remember. But either way, um, I'll be getting to you guys with that um, before that game does start. So do stay tuned. I hope you all have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.